Play number 12, holding was called against the center, and he shoots out to go get this linebacker. It's a really difficult call, but this is why you have to be careful on the arm hooks as well, because you have to know who put who in what position. 75 approaches him and puts a hand on the shoulder, and the defense rips his arm up underneath 75 to try to shed him, creating the arm hook on himself. 75 just tried to let him go. So this is an incorrect call for holding because the defense put himself in that position by trying to rip that arm off of the blocker. Play number 13, I'm looking at the left guard and also one of the blocking receivers because it's just good blocking. It's a little bit suspect. You can see some gripping, but he has good feet. He gets spun around on the guy pretty nicely, maintains his position. As you watch the end zone view as well, you can see the receiver on the front. He's just pushing, pushing, pushing. That's not a hold. That's a good no call. Let's move into the quarterback plays, and we're going to start with some roughing the passer. Play number 14, roughing the passer, was called. It is a correct call. We're going to have two different views at it. But you can see on that view that the guy was going to be a little late. Now here's what I want to really look at. When he comes in, does he get him with the helmet? I would not consider this a flagrant act because he does not have an upward thrust. He comes in laterally and his helmet makes contact with the quarterback's shoulder. Good call for roughing though. Roughing the passer on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Play number 15, roughing the passer was called, and it is a correct call, no question about it. The defender takes three steps before he hits the quarterback. And I think what's more important is how he hit the quarterback, because we already know a passer who's just thrown the ball is a defenseless player. And this defender comes in, and his initial point of contact is crown of helmet to chin. The contact's unnecessary, and there's an upward thrust. So we've got a defenseless player, an upward thrust, and a spear to the chin. Those three things combined together, in my opinion, make this a flagrant hit, and therefore qualifies for disqualification. Let's move into forward or backward pass. I refer to it as point to point because it's where he releases it. Initial direction I know by definition, but the only way to really figure this out is point to point. Looks like he releases it at the 42 and a half. When you roll it over to the receiver, he leaps from the 43, probably touches it 42 and a half, maybe a little forward. But philosophy wise, because there's no way we're never ever gonna really know for sure, just go incomplete if we're not sure. If we're sure, we'll let it run. But if we're not sure, incomplete. Nice job. Play number 17 is another one of those. Is it lateral or forwards? Did he control it not long enough to make it a catch? So the only way to really get these wing officials and referees is get those point-to-point -point spots in your head. When the quarterback releases it, get that spot. When it's first touched, get that spot. And just make the best educated decision you can at that point. If you're unsure by philosophy, it is forward. And therefore, if dropped, incomplete. Play number 18, we're going to talk about a tipped pass that's near the quarterback. And in these cases, because it is impossible to say whether or not that was going to be a forward or a backward pass or whether it was intended to be a forward or backward pass, rule it incomplete right on the spot. If it's tipped that close to the quarterback, there's no way you can see whether he was trying to lead that receiver into a forward pass or whether he was throwing a backward pass. So it's a great philosophy, incomplete. Let's move on. Play number 19, we're going to talk about intentional grounding. And in this play, intentional grounding is called. This guy's running way back. He's under duress, and he just flops the ball out there into nowhere land. So this is going to be intentional grounding. It's a spot minus five plus a loss of down. So it's a real big one. So make sure you got a flag on your uh, spot of enforcement there. Next intentional grounding example. This was also a correct call for intentional grounding. He just really just ditches the ball into the ground. There was some question as to the contact on the quarterback, but the contact was legal. It's disguised a little bit, looks a little like helmet to helmet, but it's not. He has his helmet lower and his hand pushes on the face mask of the quarterback. It was not a strike, therefore an okay hit. Play number 21, 
this was not ruled intentional grounding and it's a correct call because even though he's under under duress and the ball doesn't get near a receiver the defender hits him from the back or hits his arm and alters the throw therefore correct no call on grounding play number 22 is an illegal forward pass because the quarterback went beyond the line of scrimmage so he snapped it from the 34 you can see the chain box right there first down and he releases it with his entire body clearly beyond the line the rule in high school is foot over the line philosophy is foot down over the line but in this case everything's over the line nice call standing up sitting Little down pass on the offense five yard penalty loss of down second down Play number 23 is just a referee mechanic as it relates to the quarterback. When he gets hit like that, make sure you keep eyes on him and uh, take care of him. That's like that's like leaving your kid on the subway when you get off. You know, that guy is in a world of hurt with a lot of big guys. You need to stay with him and keep an eye on him. Play 24, this is just one of those plays that sneaks up on you. You're never expecting this, so you always have to be ready for it. And that's when the ball slips out of the quarterback's hand. Was his arm going forward? Was it not? Did it just slip out? This was ruled a fumble and recovered again by the offense, which was correct. But it's just one of those plays that sneaks up on you, so stay alert. Play number four, this is just an unusual play where you have a fumble uh, in or near the end zone, the goal line, it's a tough mechanics play to work. So wing officials, when you see that quarterback getting pushed back like that and he's in real trouble, start making your way back so you can give the referee a hand. That's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Gentlemen, my name is Dr. Evil. In a little while, you'll notice that the Kreplakistani warhead has gone missing. If you want it back, you're going to have to pay me one hundred billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Evil, this is 1969. That amount of money doesn't even exist. <laughs> That's like saying, I want a kajillion bajillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs>